All right, FAQ number 32, what is the Alexandrian cult? You might not have ever heard this term before of the Alexandrian versus the Antiochian uh, line of Bibles, but basically you have two different uh, representations of a Greek text. Okay, you have this one here that comes from Antioch. This is the Textus Receptus. This was used uh, by the translators of the King James uh, Bible. There are different editions of this put out by different scholars. This one here is the Alexandrian text type. This one is put out by the Vatican, made, made under the supervision of the Vatican. I've shared that in other studies. And this one comes from Egypt. So you have a Syrian text, you have a Egyptian text. This one underlies the versions like the ESV, the NASV, the NIV, the, you know, that junk. And all the Catholic Bibles too, by the way. Um, any Roman Catholic Bible will always use the Nestle's type text. They never once have used the Textus Receptus. So that's why we call this the Alexandrian system. Now the Alexandrian system has a very cultish type of mindset. You know, and they will continually come out and try to talk about the King James only cult like they aren't a cult. Uh, well, I hate to tell you this, but uh, there are people on both sides of the issue that can be very cultic. Okay. Uh, I don't say that everybody who's King James only is a Bible believer. There are some people over on this side that are wrong too. And if you've seen my videos, you know that I've attacked plenty of people that are Texas Receptus only and even King James only. Okay, I'm a King James Bible believer. All right. So uh, this side over here, though, comes from Alexandria, Egypt. This side's going to produce far more heretics than this one over here, than the Receptus. And, you know, the Greek Orthodox Church really is the one who has, you know, kept a lot of the Texas Receptus type manuscripts. So there's some issues there. Um, don't let anybody tell you that this, this Greek translation stuff is an exact science and things like this. There's a whole lot of leeway. So people start going back to the Greek and all this. It's not just as simple as a cut and dry thing of, I got a computer program. I can talk about the Greek and the King James. You know, I know better than the King James translators. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, you know, 47 men, 54 at the beginning, 47 at the end, you know, translators that took seven years back in a time when, you know, these guys are tutors to the queen and things, teaching her Greek, and, you know, these guys are just masters of, of languages, writing dictionaries in Persian and things. I mean, you know, these guys are incredible scholars back then. I mean, the one guy, I forget if it was... Uh, I can't think of his name right now, but he was reading and, and writing Hebrew when he was five years old, you know, English speaking man, you know, I mean, we're talking about incredibly in, uh, intelligent men that created the King James Bible. So, you know, I, I always have to laugh when I see these little commenters and, you know, and stuff and they're talking about what the Greek word here actually means. I'm thinking, sure, sure. Yeah. You know more than the translators of the King James Bible. Let me show you what the definition of the Alexandrian cult here is all about. That's my remote. Here we have the Bible Believers Bulletin. And uh, it's an older one, May 1996. Cultic Heretics at Bob Jones University. This is put out by uh, Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. And down here, he always puts this in each one of them. We have the Creed of the Alexandrian Cult. Let me zoom in here so you can see this. And this is what you will get if you run into somebody like James White or some of his little cultic followers or, um, you know, some of the other guys. I can't even think of uh, D.A. Carson, another uh, New Age sellout. Um, you know, these guys will get kickbacks and things from Bible, new version publishers and stuff. It's kind of funny. But... Um, you know, and then they'll, they'll hypocritically act like they're against Catholicism while using and supporting the Roman Catholic Bibles. They come from the Nestle's text. Kind of funny how that works. But it says here, the creed of the Alexandrian cult. Number one, this is what they believe. There is no final authority but God. Number two, since God is a spirit, there is no final authority that can be seen, heard, read, felt, or handled. And they'll dance all around that thing. They'll say, well, you know, the, the ESV or the ASV or the NASV or whatever. And then they'll say the Nestle's text. Well, the 28th or the 27th or the 26th or the 25th. And well, actually not the Nestle's, but it's the original autographs. And the original autographs didn't really exist. So, you know, this is very true. Number two there is very true. Number three, 
since all books are material, there is no book on this earth that is the final and absolute authority on what is right and what is wrong, what constitutes, constitutes truth, and what constitutes error. And that's why you will see every Alexandrian cultist, like James White, it is all about preference. And I'm in correspondence right now with a King James only uh, guy, pastor, a hireling, and he has the exact same philosophy. So you can have Alexandrian philosophy and use the King James Bible. But it's the same thing. It's all preference. Preference. What do you prefer? See, that's the, the creed of the Alexandrian cult. Number four, there was a series of writings one time which, if they had all been put into a book as soon as they were written the first time, would have constituted an infallible and final authority by which to judge truth and error. Referring to the original autographs. Number five, however, the series of writings was lost and the God who inspired them was unable to preserve their content through Bible-believing Christians at Antioch, Syria, where the first Bible teachers were, Acts chapter 13, verse 1, and where the first missionary trip originated, Acts 13, verses 1 through 52, and where the word Christian originated, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Number six, so God chose to almost preserve them through Gnostics and philosophers from Alexandria, Egypt, even though God called his son out of Egypt, Matthew 2, Jacob out of Egypt, Genesis 49, Israel out of Egypt, Exodus 15, and Joseph's bones out of Egypt, Exodus 13. Okay, number seven. So there are two streams of Bibles, the most accurate, though of course there is no final absolute authority for determining truth and error. It is a matter of preference. Uh, are the Egyptian translations from Alexandria, Egypt, which are almost the originals, although not quite. Number eight, the most inaccurate translations were those that, were, that brought about the German Reformation, Luther, Zwingli, Buller, Zinzendorf, Spenner, etc., and the worldwide missionary movement of the English-speaking people, the Bible that Sunday, Tory, Moody, Finney, Spurgeon, Whitfield, Wesley, and Chapman used. Um, but we can tolerate these if those who believe in them will tolerate us. After all, there is no absolute and final authority that anyone can read, teach, preach, or handle. The whole thing is a matter of preference. You may prefer what you prefer, and we will prefer what we prefer. Let us live in peace, and if we can not agree on every, anything or everything, let us all agree on one thing. There is no final, absolute, written authority of God anywhere on this earth. This is the creed of the Alexandrian cult. Absolutely true. Nobody has ever refuted that. Not one of these Alexandrian perverts can tell you that they have an absolute authority, a written authority. They can't do it. They can't do it. You run into a James White or somebody like that, they cannot produce a written standard, a perfect authority. It has to go back to preference. And why does it have to go to preference? Well, because of a verse in the early part of the Bible. I'm sure if you're a Bible believer, you have no idea where I'm going with this. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, and the, or Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. So you see, when you have a book like this, and you say, this is God's word, I don't question it, I don't dare to question it, I don't dare to change it, hey, I just believe it. Whatever you want to say about it, I believe it. I believe this is God's book. You know, the just shall live by faith. And you might not be able to answer every single little argument that these heretics come out with. See, that's that's another part of the Alexandrian cult. They will continue. They they spend their time learning ways to attack the King James Bible. Which one do you have? Sixteen eleven or seventeen sixty nine? Uh, Erasmus was a Catholic. Um, Easter is a mistranslation of the Greek word Pascha. Um, on and on and on and on and on. They will spend their time learning questions. And where'd they get that from? Who was it that just said, uh, Yea, hath God said? Pose a question. Why do you pose a question? So you can come out and say, 
I can be as God's knowing good and evil. It's what I prefer. Hey, and I get this all the time from these stinking heretics, these Alexandrian heretics. You can prefer the King James Bible. That's fine. But I personally prefer four different versions, you know, ESV, NIV, NASV, NKJV, or whatever other satanic books that they want to use. Is there an Alexandrian cult? Oh, yes, there is. And you would do well to get out of it if you've been fooled and deceived into being into it. Okay? And uh, if you're a Bible believer, don't let these Alexandrian cultists shake you up. All you need to know is, what is your standard of authority? Do you have a written book that you consider to be the perfect written Word of God? And that video I did on uh, James White, you know, and his Jesuitical statements on 501c3, the Lord gave me that idea uh, for a couple purposes, but it was kind of funny because one of the other big attacks that the New Versionists will say, they'll say that King James' only advocates are militant and divisive and, and mean-spirited. Uh, part of my experiment there that I did with that video, I wanted to have a, uh, a thing that I could show people to show that uh, there's plenty of name-calling on their side as well. Look at some of the names those people called me in that video. You know, they're just as militant and, and arrogant and everything as well as they claim us to be, you know. It's kind of funny. So, don't mess around with the Alexandrian cult. Um, and of course, you know, one other thing I wanted to say real quickly too, and that is perfect example of the Alexandrian cult mindset that's in that video there with James White. You know, we need to believe that the Bible is the inspired and errant, you know, word of the living God the Bible, you know, and he doesn't even believe what he's saying. The guy's a total stinking liar. He's a heretic and a member of the Alexandrian cult. He's not the head of it. Okay, if you want to know who's at the head of the Alexandrian cult, that would be Satan. He's been using that same philosophy since Genesis chapter 3. And of course, you know, the Pope's involved in it and, and you know, every Catholic priest out there is involved in it. And so is James White and all of his little buddies.